Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will do one hands-on project, which is MNIST classification. This is very good starting point for the beginners who wants to learn neural networks. So in the previous videos, we have gone through the neural network architectures and built them from scratch in Python. In this particular video, we will use that knowledge and build the full project end to end. So first let's see what is an MNIST dataset. So MNIST dataset is actually a multi-class classification dataset. The type of the data is images and each image is of the resolution 28 by 28. The total training images are 60K and test images are 10K. So it is actually handwritten digit recognition. So these are actually numbers or digits from 0 to 9 and each image will have one number between 0 and 9 and we have to identify which number is it. The data set is available in UByte format in this website. So this UByte format we can convert into images or we can convert into a string. However we want we can do it depending on how we are using the data set. For our use case, we are using artificial neural network or dense neural network, which is having independent neurons in each layer. So for this type of network, we cannot directly give the image input. So we are actually converting this image into a single one dimensional array, which will be passed as input to this network. So the input layer for this network will have 74 neurons, each neuron taking the input of one pixel. And then the output, we will have 10 neurons because this is multi-class classification of 10 classes. We need to identify given an image, which class it belongs to out of these 10. And the number of hidden layers and the neurons in each hidden layer is user's choice. Depends on the problem we are trying to solve, we can choose how many hours we want. For our project now, I am considering this sample network. If you consider this network, I am having 784 nodes in the input layer and 10 nodes in the output layer. I am using two hidden layers. The first hidden layer has 128 nodes and the second hidden layer has 64 nodes. So this is a simple neural network which I am thinking it should be able to solve the MNIST problem. The approach for solving any problem in neural networks is actually trial and error. If you think like the problem is too complex and this is much simpler network, then you can increase the number of layers or the number of neurons in each layer. It all depends on the user's choice and it depends on the problem we are trying to solve. So I think this network is good enough. So let's go with this network. So these are the steps I'll actually follow while doing this project. I have already downloaded the UByte files and I kept them on the Google Drive. So now I'll convert that UByte files into CSV file. So the CSV file has number of lines. Each line corresponds to one image data. So and then we will actually load the data from CSV file and then visualize them. Later we will build the neural network and we will write the functions for both training and evaluating the network. So without any delay, let's start coding. Okay, now let's start coding. I'm just uh, renaming it as uh, MNIST. So first thing is I'll just load my Google Drive here. So if, let's see if I have this one. I'll just, you can just load like this as well. Once you mount the drive, you can see the drive here. You can actually view all the files available in your Google Drive. So if you see here, I have this MNIST folder. Inside this, I have UByte files, which I have downloaded from Jan Lucan website. Now I'll convert this UByte files into CSV files. So for that, I need to access these files from the Google Drive. So first thing first, I'll just uh, uh, load the necessary libraries. So for plotting the images, we need to write this in line. So now let's uh, load the MNIST dataset. So for that, I will just use uh, MNIST train X, which is my train images. So I'll just copy the path here. So let's just check if it is loading properly. Yeah, so we are able to access the drive properly and uh, MNIST train Y. So this is labels. So I'll just take the train labels and uh, copy the path copy it here mnist test x and then mnist test y so we need to so we need to add the paths the same way here so let me add those first okay so now all the data set is loaded uh, so we now we need to convert this u byte into csv files so for that I'll write one function here. So I'll just be reading these files and then converting them into CSV file. So for that I'll just uh, keep one convert function. I will take the image and the labels and then what are the file I want to save, I'll save that file. So I will just take uh, uh, maybe images and then labels and then out file 
and uh, how many are there images we can take the number which can be 60,000 for training and 10,000 for testing so let's suppose image file I'm opening uh, open IMGS so I am reading them as a binary file and then uh, label file open labels read binary now for writing this into a CSV file I need to open the CSV file uh, open mm, out file this will be in write mode okay so i'm just pointing these two directly those locations from there the actual data starts and i'll just keep one list of things for reading each line and writing it to the total list i'll write to the csv file directly so the images list now for i in a range of n so 60,000 let's suppose here image is equal to out of label f dot read of one now for j in range of 28 star 28 which is 784 for every value i need to read now image dot append image file dot read now the total images i need to append this particular image so this will finish my reading of all the files now i need to write all of those image files in a csv so my output file is a csvf dot write so comma separated I am keeping you can keep anything because it's just a line so while reading a CSV file we need to keep a comma separated so I am keeping comma separated later while I am reading these images I will just split this into comma separated thing into a list and then load it, load it into the network so I will just directly uh, join that whole list as a comma separated string and after everything I need to keep one new line and finally I need to close all the files so now I have closed all the files so this should work I'm just running this so my convert function I'm calling here so first thing is the images path and then labels path and then output file path so I'll just keep uh, mnist train x this is my images path mnist train y this is my labels path and then I'll write this one into the same path actually uh, so I'll just copy till here and then I'll just keep uh, train.csv uh, same thing I'll do for uh, testing so now let's see okay uh, we are missing the count so let's give the count as uh, 60,000 here 10,000 here so this should create these uh, train.csv and test.csv in this mnist folder okay so let me refresh this so yeah you can see test.csv and train.csv so now let's load these and read these and plot the images so i will just open this uh, train.csv let me copy this okay so train.csv i will open in uh, read mode now i will just uh, take a train list which is my list of all the images right so every line here is corresponding to one image so if i now check the length of this train list it should be 60k okay so this is 60k so now i will take one of these images that means one of this uh, train list element and i will plot it as an image so i'll just uh, show you how it is so the initial one which we are appending is a label and after that we are appending the whole uh, string of each pixel values right so that's what we have done while converting that so now let's suppose i'm taking the 100th element so if i take the 100th element you can see this the 5 is actually the label and all other 784 values are the pixel values so let's convert this into an image so for that first these are all comma separated so i will just take uh, values or pixel values whatever so train list of 100 right so this one i'll split with the comma separated so it will give me all the pixel values as a list now now with this list i am creating an array so numpy as array values now except the first element which is my label all others are the actual image so i am taking after one index and then these i am reshaping as 28 by 28 because that is my original image size now this image will plot this matplotlib by plot i am show image array uh, cmap is uh, grace and interpolation nothing none so now let's plot this value it should be five image of a five so it is saying image data of d type u3 cannot be converted into float np as okay yeah, yeah i forgot actually we need to load it as a float array so as f array we need to keep so if you see this we have got five 
so this is an image of 5 our neural network now it needs to tell this as a 5 so okay so these are if you see the values these are actually ranging from 0 to 255 but uh, it is better to standardize them in between 0 and 1 before giving to the network so that one we will do when you are actually passing to the network for now we'll just keep it like this so this is how you can actually read the train data the same thing we can do for test data so let's suppose the same thing i'm copying here you can actually uh, visualize also test data but i'm not visualizing it i'm just loading it because we need it for evaluation so i'll just load uh, test csv and uh, let's keep it as test file and then test list now this should be 10k okay so now we have loaded all the images both training and testing so now let's see our network so we know our network is actually having two hidden layers one with 128 and second one with 64 and my input neurons will have 784 because the input is 28 by 28 pixels converted into a single array so which is 784 and my output will be 10 neurons because that will be actually having the probability scores for 10 digits so i'm just building one dense neural network okay so for this one uh, we have many functions let's just see what are the functions we need here so let's suppose this is my uh, initialization so this will be used for initializing the number of uh, layers and how many neurons we need for each layer and also once you have like hidden layers those have actually weights so we need to randomly initialize these weights so for initializing those weights we, all those things we can do in this particular function and let's suppose once we have these the network constructed maybe we need one forward function so this is actually forward pass where you will actually do the uh, vector multiplication like vector dot product with the input weight input values with the weight values and then you will get something you will apply sigmoid function and after that you will again pass that to the next layer so this total the forward pass starting from the input to the output probabilities the whole thing should happen here that is the forward pass function we will fill this later and then again we need backward pass which is actually updating the weights that means calculating the gradients of each weight value with respect to the loss and then after that updating the weight values and then this will actually finish the training uh, maybe for every epoch i need to evaluate it how good it is performing on my test data set so for that i will just do one function for uh, accuracy computation so i'll just keep this one for accuracy competition and then what else do we need so we have done the network initialization here and after that forward pass backward pass and then evaluation so i think yeah this is good enough so for now let's keep it this so this is my class so now when i want to actually do the training so i need to initialize the object of this one so i'm just initializing the object here so now let's see what we need for initialize function so this constructor we need how many layers we have and in each layer how many neurons we need let's suppose i am just keeping that as uh, sizes so which is a list uh, this list will have the number of neurons in each and every layer so now my network has four layers one is input layer two hidden layers and one output layer so input layer has 784 nodes which is equal to 28 by 28 and first hidden layer has 128 second hidden layer has 64 and my output layer has 10 nodes so this is what sizes i am keeping fine now if you consider forward pass and backward pass in this only that means your training is happening in this class only so for training we need to give how many epochs we need to train it for so epochs is one term where your whole data set you pass it through the network at once that completes one epoch so when you are training a network it's a trial and error method weights are initialized randomly and from there they will get adjusted to reach your highest accuracy right so when you are doing that the same number of examples the same examples you might need to pass to the network again and again so how many times you want to pass the data set to your network this is these epochs so i'm keeping as 10 which is very less of course but the data set also it is simpler so let's keep it 10 for now and then we have learning rate when you are updating the weight values you need to update it by multiplying with this learning rate so this learning rate is basically guiding the whole training process so now these are the things now the same things i need to initialize in my constructor right so i'll just keep these here once i get these things 
in my constructor i need to fill the values now so let's uh, remove this pass so self dot sizes is sizes and self dot epochs is epochs and self dot lr is lr now using these sizes i can build my neural network so let's suppose my input layer sizes of 0 and then uh, hidden 1 is sizes of 1 and then hidden 2 sizes of 2 and then output right output layer sizes of 3 so these are my individual neurons in each of the layer now what are my parameters so input layer and output layer doesn't have any weights only you will have weight values for hidden layers so there is one set of connection between input layer and first hidden layer that is one set and the second set of weights between first hidden layer and second hidden layer and the third set of weights between the second hidden layer and the final output layer so we have three set of weights so now we need to initialize these things now here i'll just keep one w1 which is my first set of weights so these set of weights are actually we will initialize all the weights randomly so i am just initializing from the random distribution normal distribution so this is actually hidden one and the input layer so between input layer and the hidden layer we have one weight values one set of weight values now these weight values i am just standardizing it and the same way the second set of weight values these values are basically the weight values between first hidden layer and the second hidden layer so the same thing i will just keep random initialization and then these are between first hidden layers and the second hidden layers now the final weight values are between the second hidden layer and the output layer so these are my weight values now these are the weight values which i initialized randomly so if you consider these uh, this will be my 128 by 784 and this will be my 64 by 128 and this is 10 by 64. So these are the corresponding sizes of these weight matrices. So if you consider now, we actually have the building blocks of the whole network. Now during forward pass, we will connect to this. Now to the forward pass, we need to send the images first, right? Each image will come here. I am considering that as the X train. Okay. Now I am taking the copy of uh, self dot parameters because the intermediate values I need to keep it here so that it will be used in the backward pass. So I am just taking these uh, parameters here. Now parameters of. So I am just creating new variables here which are activations. So the initial activation will be my input itself. So activations are nothing but the outputs which are passing to the next input. Now I will multiply these input activation with the weight value w1 once i do the dot product i will get one output so that is my activation which is going as input for the next hidden layer so that way activation 0 activation 1 a2 a3 like that you will see and then uh, first thing is i will pass this to from input layer to hidden layer 1 so this is the computation it is happening here so params of z1 so z is actually the, the output of dot product so i'll just do dot product of so either you can do a0 and then dot product of the transpose or you can do the reverse way so i'm just doing here uh, the same thing here 1 w1 and then params of a0 so if you want to shift this to the beginning then you have to keep transpose for w1 so either way it is fine you have to match these dimensions so my a0 is actually if you consider this a0 is 784 by 1 right this is the vector i am getting and this is 128 by 784 so if you keep this before and then this you will get the output of 128 by 1 so here it is 128 by 1 so if you keep it the reverse way then you need to take the transpose of it to match the dimensions otherwise the dot product will throw error for you now i have got these params of z1 i need to now pass these to the activation function which are very important if you don't have activation functions your network can't learn because it's simply a linear combinations so now uh, i need to pass this to some activation function so the com common activation functions are sigmoid and tan h like that right so let's suppose uh, i will use uh, sigmoid function so for that uh, maybe you can use some of the functions available as part of uh, scikit learn or these things but uh, as we are doing it from scratch let's write one function for uh, sigmoid so we will just see this one and we will just keep one more flag whether we need derivative or not because when we are going for the backward pass we need derivatives 
so we'll just keep this flag if we have derivative you know the derivative of sigmoid that i'm actually implementing it here okay so this is the derivative of the sigmoid and if you don't want the derivative if you want directly the sigmoid function in the forward pass then it is 1 by 1 plus e power x so 1 by 1 plus e power x 1 plus numpy exponential of minus x so this is the sigmoid function now i'll call this sigmoid function self dot sigmoid and then i will pass the z1 params so this finishes our uh, first layer computation and then from here we need to pass from hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 so this one we will call it as z2 so np dot params of uh, w2 and then params of a1 right because the output is a1 from the previous layer so now these things also again i need to pass through the soft sigmoid activation function and i will call it as params of a2 so two layers are done now we need the final computation hidden layer 2 to output layer so this one is i will call it as z3 and a3 so params of z3 np dot params of uh, w3 the third weights and then params of a2 params of a3 i will call this after so here my final layer as we are having multiple outputs this is a multi-class classification so we cannot use sigmoid in the final layer so we need to use softmax so we need to implement softmax function activation function and we need to use that in the final layer so softmax x and the same way here derivative false uh, first thing is we need to calculate the exponentials of our all the things so i'll just take numpy dot exponential of x minus x dot max now if derivative we need to return one value otherwise we need to return another value exponentials divided by numpy dot sum of all of those things sum of exponentials x is equal to zero multiplied by one minus exponentials divided by numpy dot sum of exponentials x is equal to zero and then if you don't want uh, the actual derivative then it will be like a simple summation uh, and then uh, normalization so all these exponentials you need to normalize by using numpy dot sum so this will give me the normalized values so this is my softmax implementation now for the final layer we need to use the softmax activation function the final values are actually params of z3 so this is what i am returning actually so this is my forward pass so i have passed all the inputs all the way from the input to final probability scores now i will do the backward pass so for doing the backward pass we need the network predictions as well as the output because we need to calculate the error so for that uh, i will take uh, y train which is my actual ground truth output and then whatever the network output we are getting so that will be my output so now let's suppose uh, i'm just taking the params into the same way i did for uh, forward pass i'll copy this now for each and every weight matrix i need to calculate how much i need to modify those for getting the good accuracy so that is what i am taking this dictionary for now calculate the w3 update so if you consider the network right so the output whatever we are getting we will compare it with the actual ground truth and that is our error and this error if you want to propagate backwards initially you have the softmax probability scores right the softmax activations so you need to calculate the derivatives of the softmax and then the outputs you need to pass to the next layer which is having the actual activations and after that you need to pass to the previous layer so that way the backward propagation will happen so now we'll calculate the error so if i take uh, output minus y train which is actually the difference between the network output and ground truth so output shape zero self dot so i am now actually calling the softmax function but with the derivative so i am actually back propagating through the softmax function so it will go through the derivative part and it will give me the derivative so this is my error so now change w of so w3 because if you are you are actually going from backwards w1 w2 w3 are forward pass now if you are coming from back so initially it will be w3 so this change you will get after the w2 and then after the w1 so this one outer matrix multiplication actually i'm doing with respect to error and then params of a2 and then uh, now i'm calculating the w2 update so here i'm not even modifying the weights i'm only calculating how much change i need to make for each and every weight value so once i get this delta w i'll actually do the weight updation so this one i'll get this and then self dot so now in this 
the second layer and first layer I have sigmoid functions so I need to call the sigmoid function with the derivative as true so now this error I again need to calculate the change with respect to w2 and now if I want to do I need to again do the outer multiplication with the error value and then params of a1 so again I will do the same process so then finally I have all the weight value changes I need to make in a single dictionary which is change w so I'll write another function for weight update so that's one I'll just keep uh, update weights so the same change w I'll pass it here and then this one I need to take one by one w1 w2 w3 the corresponding values changes and I need to update it to the actual weight value so for uh, key comma value in change w dot items this is a dictionary I am accessing the item one by one now uh, self dot params of uh, key so this key will be w1 w2 w3 one by one now I need to subtract it this will be multiplying with my LR value that's it so this is my weight updation so if you consider this actually this is like uh, uh, w uh, underscore t plus one right so that the current update so that will be wt whatever the previous weight value minus uh, your learning rate multiplied by delta w so this learning rate we will use for guiding the actual training process right so let's see this computing to accuracy will come again uh, so now i need to have one more function the training loop actual training loop so now this is all fine okay we have written the forward pass backward pass all those things but now we need to do the actual training for that i'll just keep uh, one extra function which is called train for this train i need to pass the actual uh, data so i'll just keep a train list test list fine so this is all i need now i'm measuring the time so i'll just keep a start time is equal to time dot now we need to run for number of epochs range of self dot epochs so for every epoch i need to pass through all the data set so what i will do is again i will take for x in train list so first i will do the training process once one epoch training is done i will do the testing ones so now each training one is actually one line in the csv so this is actually one line in the csv so i need to split this line with comma and then get the individual pixel values and then convert into a numpy array then pass it to the network right so the same thing we will do here so this will be x dot split of comma now i have got all the values as a list so i'll just keep uh, inputs as numpy dot as float array whatever the values we are having from the first element we need to take because the first actual first element is the index value so we will take from this element and then we will actually normalize it as i mentioned earlier we need to normalize this value so this is my inputs now i need to calculate the targets because we need to calculate the error during the backward pass right so targets are actual ground truth which is your y train in your backward pass function so now here i am just creating first of all all zeros how many zeros we need how many output nodes we have 10 right so 10 will be my this one so this is actually called one hot encoder so you have 10 a vector of 10 zeros and wherever your actual label is that particular value will be one and all others will be zeros so that's what i'm doing it here one dummy addition instead of zeros so this is called soft labeling now wherever the actual label is there that particular value i need to keep it as one so values of zero the first value will be my in actual uh, ground truth so that i am keeping as 0 0.99 all other values will be uh, zeros so actually it should be hard labeling is all the values will be zeros only this value will be one but i am doing the soft labeling here which is 0 0.01 and this label will be 0 0.99 right now this is done okay we have got the inputs and we have got the targets so now i need to pass the inputs to the network so let's suppose i am passing this through the forward pass function now i got the output so this is my network output now i need to do the backward pass so for backward pass we need to send the ground truth as well as the network output so the first one is y train which are my targets and after that output is my second input passing to the backward pass now i need to update the parameters so i'll just call update weights so for these update weights what are the inputs so 
update weights the input is only change w okay so now this finishes this particular inside for loop this finishes one total passing of all the training images to the network and updating the weights correspondingly okay now once that is done now i need to evaluate the model on the test data set so i'll just do self dot compute accuracy now for this computing accuracy i need the test data now let's see the logic here so here i will get uh, x test or let's suppose a test data i will get now this particular test data i need to again parse it because this data itself has the images as well as the ground truth both now i need to do the forward pass so for testing we need only forward pass so now i have got the output as well as targets so this is my fine network output then this is my target so i can directly do the computation so i'll just do predictions what is my actual this one so i can directly take the numpy arg max arg max of output whichever is having the highest probability that is my prediction predictions i'll just keep one list here because for every image i need the predictions then predictions append so i'll just compare prediction is equal to this numpy arg max of uh, targets wherever it is equal it will give one otherwise it will be zeros so that's the same thing right now after i pass it through all the test images i need to just to take the mean value of predictions right done okay so this computation i am just doing it here now dnn dot train what i need to give train list test list okay now the training has started so let it continue once it finishes the whole 10 epochs i mean you can see the log for every uh, epoch actually so as of now we are not printing anything so let's uh, stop it we will just uh, print these values so we will just uh, print the epochs and uh, accuracy everything keep this one so now time actually i need to keep uh, inside the epoch so i'll just uh, take how much time it is taking for each epoch now it should print for every epoch so let's run that and run the training again so now the training has started for every epoch actually it will print the accuracy percentages and time taken so as you see now the first epoch has been completed and the time taken is 64 seconds almost a minute and then the accuracy is 16 percent okay starting accuracy is 16 percent let's see how much it will become once it completes the second epoch so usually it should increase the accuracy should increase epoch by epoch so we'll see we have to finish 10 epochs and then finally we will get the final model yeah so okay we jumped from 16 percent to 30 percent so we are doing good okay so let it continue for uh, all the 10 epochs and then uh, our actually the training will be finished yeah now you can see that uh, the training has finished for 10 epochs and uh, the accuracy the final accuracy has reached uh, 71 percentage and uh, remember that this is not actually the training accuracy this is test accuracy so this is the actual accuracy on the test data set so that's it we have actually built the neural network and we have trained the model with the uh, mnist data set and we reached 71 percent accuracy so if we increase the epochs we will reach even 99 percent accuracy as well so it can go to up to 95 like that easily so total 20 epochs it can reach 95 percent so you can try it on your own i'll share this code in the description so you can try this uh, on your own by downloading this data set and keeping in your google drive that's it in this particular one we have actually implemented the whole thing on our own we did not use any of the packages except uh, numpy but if you want to do the same thing in uh, using some toolboxes like scikit-learn or tensorflow or pytorch it will be very less code actually so they already have so many pre-built functions which we can use and directly we can this total implementation the network implementation forward pass backward pass all of these we can finish hardly in 10-15 uh, lines the total code so but uh, yeah it is becoming too lengthy so we will cover the tensorflow and pytorch implementation in the next videos of the same uh, mnist uh, example okay thank you see you then bye